This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Sometimes uncomfortable and always energizing missions in my own work has been what I've come to refer to as decolonize your garden. For centuries now, the most visible representations of horticulture have been images of middle-aged and middle-class or affluent white people. But horticulture is a human impulse in all cultures, in all times, practiced, codified, ritualized, and valued across any and all social boundaries. I find it eye-opening to interrogate myself about my own biases while striving to never inappropriately use or appropriate others' cultural ways of being and knowing. These are tricky, winding pathways, but important to navigate with humility, openness, respect, and acknowledgement. A note on other biases. I'm a white, middle-class, middle-aged, cisgender woman who loves this planet, her plants, landscapes, gardens, and all her people, but especially her plant-loving people. While I've chosen for the sake of simplicity to use the standard pronouns she, he, they, I embrace and applaud a wide, inclusive view of gender and sentient life. Our physiological ranks include all beautiful manner of non-binary beings. And I aim to advance and celebrate a feminine principle while encouraging ever greater balance and broader diversity in all fields. The hardest part of writing this book was choosing the women to include. For every woman here, there are many more who could be. But constraints are both necessary and useful. I limited the geographic scope to the world I know best, with representatives from the United States, England, Ireland, Wales, Canada, Australia, India, and Japan. They range beautifully across race, ethnicity, socioeconomic and religious backgrounds, sexual orientation, and age. Of each, I asked them to note either women who preceded and inspired them, or women coming up in the field whom they thought the world should know about. You'll find these names listed at the end of each profile. They create a beautiful, often overlapping web of women in the plant world. Sometimes they're very personal choices, mothers, aunts, grandmothers. Sometimes they're simply identified by name and occupation. And sometimes the profiled woman has written a bit about how and why they're important. I hope you're intrigued and follow these connections, helping make the network of women and plants more visible. This book is an extension of my 10 years in public radio and podcasting with my program, Cultivating Place. Through interviews with plant people and organizations from around the world, Cultivating Place explores the relationships between our plants and gardens, the natural history of the places in our lives, and their importance to our cultural and environmental literacy our broader communities, and our individual well-being. I've gardened my entire life, lived in many places around the world while doing so, and have been a professional garden communicator for the past 20 years. I believe gardens and gardeners are powerful, intersectional spaces, and agents of betterment in our world. I see hope and value in a self-sustaining cycle of living with plants, loving plants, learning plants, growing plants, knowing plants, interpreting plants, and educating and engaging upcoming plants people and the public through communication and interpretation. My hope is that this collection is informative and inspiring for all listeners. There are so many ways we engage in and grow from the cultivation of our plant places. Enjoy the cultivation of your places while you enjoy the beautiful stories of how these 75 extraordinary women cultivate theirs one handful of plant-rich earth at a time. Jennifer Jewell Leslie Bennett Expanding the Collective Horticultural Imagination Her work, owner and founder, Pine House Edible Gardens, founder, Black Sanctuary Gardens, Oakland, California. Her plant, the passion flower, it's vibrant, beautiful, strong, medicinal, visually inspiring, delicious. I just love it in all the different forms it comes in. Plus, it was one of the first plants I learned about when I lived in Jamaica. I love that it's tough and grows rampantly, and that it's so healing. Her plant journey. Leslie designs, installs, and maintains edible landscapes, landscapes that are both beautiful and productive, 
including plants that can be harvested for food, medicine, and beauty. More and more, specifically through her work on Black Sanctuary Gardens.